props to Corsair, this is actually a really amazing board. It uses cherry viola switches, which were launched in January 2020. And it's been a long time since I've even heard anything about those switches. But finally, Corsair launches the K60, their mechanical keyboard lineup with these cherry viola switches. Honestly, I thought everyone already forgot about these switches. But this is a really good board and I'm super excited to do this review because I've been using it pretty consistently for the past week and that's really saying something. So let's jump into the review. All right, so in the box you get, well, you don't get very much. You get the manuals, the Corsair K60 RGB Pro SE manual here. And it has things about the lighting, the media keys, where you can connect it, where you can download the software, things like that. So all really simple stuff here. And then of course we have a warranty guide and safety information. So I don't really open these things, but you probably wanna keep them for later in case the time comes where you need to have warranty done. And it comes with this really plush wrist rest, which is the same one that you see on the Corsair K100, which launched very recently as well. And of course you get the keyboard itself. Now it doesn't look like much when you first take it out. It actually doesn't look very special at all, but trust me, it is. All right, so build quality. It's a pretty simple looking mechanical keyboard. It's very simple, no frills, all black, pretty sleek looking. At the top here, you see that it has a brushed and anodized black aluminum finish, and it's quite thick. There's no manual flex when you try and flex the board whatsoever. The entirety of the other parts of the case is plastic, but the top is aluminum, and it might scratch up quite easily. You might see some white marks here and there, but trust me, you can just take your finger and wipe it off real quick because it's not actually damaging the aluminum and it's, it scratches quite easily. So keep that in mind. At the top right, you see the Corsair logo and it's a shiny glossy black. But if you take this somewhere like the library, school, the office, wherever, no one's probably gonna recognize that it's a gaming mechanical keyboard right off the bat. In fact, it looks like any other keyboard actually. On the left bottom here, you see that there's a stylized K60 similar to the K100. And I appreciate that they really take the time to look at some of these small details in a board. I really like that. So one thing you might notice is that it has this, and this is a non-detachable cable, but not only that, it also has no USB pass-through. The wire is quite thin. It's a rubber cable and it doesn't really develop any kinks once you take it out of its twisty tie. At the end here, you have a USB port, of course. Something that I wish Corsair had considered here with a cable like this was to bring it out the back here and provide some kind of routing channels for it. Now that would have been really easy to do since this cable is quite flexible and it's thin enough where it would have fit into a channel that either went up or to the left or to the right, depending on obviously where your PC is set up relative to your desk. So that would have been really good to see, but not a, that's like extra. I feel like that's sort of bonus in a way. At the top right here, you also see that there are a bunch of indicators. Of course, you have your num lock, scroll lock, caps lock, and windows lock indicators. When they're turned on, they all have a white LED. So really simple there. And really, other than that Corsair logo on the top right, you don't really see any big branding or real obvious clues that, oh, that's a Corsair board, you know? Unlike a lot of their bigger flagships where you can just glance right away and you can say, yep, that's, that's a gaming board, all right? So at the back here, you'll see that it looks quite different than the flagship lineup. It has two kick-up stands and they both go up to eight degrees and they only have one angle. And then you'll see that there are five rubber feet here on the back to prevent any slipping. And I haven't really experienced any slippage whatsoever, but the flagship boards have much larger rubber feet. So 
Those boards are just meant for action. This is meant for a little less action. But if you're using a desk mat or something, you really shouldn't worry about any slippage of any kind. Now let's move on to the wrist rest. So the wrist rest here is the same one as in their K100 and it is really premium feeling. There's a plush memory foam that's coated by this nice pleather feeling material. And in the middle here, you do see the Corsair logo go down, but I would say it even looks stylish rather than being a big advertisement for Corsair. And it connects magnetically through these little magnets on the back. There's two of them and they're on rubber tabs. So these things aren't really going to break off of your wrist rest. And alongside that, there are six rubber feet back here. So that is a ginormous amount of rubber feet, surprisingly. And they ditched the black outline here in plastic that was seen on their previous wrist rest to replace it with a wrist rest that only had that premium look and feel to it. So this is really awesome. One note I would like to say is that because this is the special edition, this wrist rest is not available on the other versions of the Corsair K60, unfortunately. So very nice wrist rest, connects really easy, just snaps straight in when you slide it. And it's really comfortable. I like it a lot because it, well, it is called a wrist rest, but it acts more like a palm rest. So the rest is right here on the meaty part of your hand rather than on your wrist, which can lead to carpal tunnel if you put a lot of pressure on there, especially over time. Okay, enough about that, enough about carpal tunnel. No one, no one wants to hear about carpal tunnel. All right, onto the keycaps. The keycaps of the SE here are double shot PBT plastic. If you're buying the other versions, they all come with ABS plastic, but keep in mind that with all of Corsair's newest updates, these keyboards do have a standard bottom row. No more of that weird small Windows key or the weird small FN and menu key. No more of that. We have a standard bottom row. Finally, they have listened to our complaints, our demands, all of our forum posts, all of that. And they have delivered a standard bottom row. So with that said, if you even get the version with ABS keycaps, you can always replace them with something a little bit nicer, something a little bit more appealing, something more personalized to you. But today we're talking about these PBT keycaps. They are the same ones as on the K100. They are double shot, they're shine through, and they even updated their legends to be smaller and a little bit less square. So remember the K95 Platinum XT RGB review that I did, link that right here if you wanna check that out had a bunch of complaints about it. But in this one, they fixed a lot of that. So no more of the really obtrusive gamery font that lets everybody know he plays games and he loves RGB. The K60 does have a floating keycap design. You can see the exposed switches from the side and with the RGB turned on, it looks pretty nice. And another note, we're gonna talk about more about the switches later on, but the Cherry Viola switches do have the regular cross shaped stems. So all of your keycaps, whatever collection you have in boxes, you know, maybe over here, you can still plop them on this board. It is a full size layout, no weird small shifts or anything like that. So pretty much anything you find will fit on this board. And the profile of these keycaps are, as you guessed it, OEM profile. If you're already using a mechanical keyboard, that's probably what you're used to. One complaint though, is that if you dig into the manual enough, you'll see that there are secondary media features and other things like Windows Lock. But on the keycaps, that's nowhere to be seen. So if you want to do volume up, volume down, pause, play, things like that, you have to refer to the manual or you need to memorize them. All right, so the secondary media functions are between F5 and F12. Yep, make sure you keep your Keep your nice manual handy so you know exactly what you're talking about. With RGB, with this specific board, you can change between the preset lighting effects by holding FN and either pressing any number from one to zero. Zero is the static effect. So if you press zero multiple times, it'll cycle through the different colors that are available. 
and there are many effects. We'll go over those right now. All right, those were the lighting effects to increase and decrease the brightness. It's FN and F3 and F4. And then for Windows Lock, it's FN and F1. So you can make the effect faster or slower and even change the direction that it's rotating depending on the effect, of course. It needs to be a moving effect for you to use those, but that is FN and plus equals or left bracket right bracket so very easy to access all of that just make sure you have the manual in front of you of course there's the corsair iq software that you can use on this board as well it's not as full featured or super amazingly functional like with the k100 but it does everything that you want it to do probably so with the iq software you can do macro recording key remapping and custom RGB profiles. But one downside to using any of that is that you need to have the IQ software open while you do that. So if you program a macro, for example, to do whatever, you need to have that software open to use the macro. Once you close that software, that macro won't work anymore. Same thing with the custom RGB profiles. So it is saved to your computer and your IQ. So if you unplug your keyboard take it somewhere else it's not going to have the same settings so that is unfortunate but with the preset lighting i think like you'll have a good time i primarily just use either like the static rainbow breathing or static white so i'm did i say static rainbow breathing it really works on this board because it looks so simple so professional all right enough about rgb the point is you can customize it. You can do per key RGB programmability with the Corsair IQ software, and it does have all of its preformed effects. That's all good and all, but let's move on to the stabilizers. And if you've been watching all those K100 reviews, then you know Corsair has upgraded their stabilizers. And to be honest, wow, I'm just really impressed. The stabilizers were one of the things about the Corsair boards that just rendered them almost unusable in a setting where you didn't want to annoy people so but corsair now lubes their stabilizers right out of the factory and it's not just the here's a big glob of lube here here's a big glob of lube there it's quite precise it's well done to be honest they lube the wire the stabilizer wire that goes into the little stabilizers it looks like i could have lubed them to be honest but the sounds are really good. I'm just gonna give you guys a quick preview right now, but of course sound test is at the end like always. So no more are the days of the extra extra rattly, super noisy stabilizers. Props to Corsair on this one mad respect so despite having all my custom keyboards on my desk sorted to the side i've been using this pretty consistently to write multiple website articles do all of my notes and everything and i haven't had the huge tendency that i usually get to switch off of the board that i'm testing that's really gotta mean something that means this keyboard overall as a whole really doesn't annoy me in feel or annoy me in sound Speaking of all of that, let's move on to the most important part and the most unique feature about this keyboard, these switches. So these switches are the newest Cherry Viola switches, 
Cherry made the announcement of these switches in January 2020, where they said they wanted to create a budget-friendly switch that would really tackle the mass keyboard market. I think they meant by that is that, you know when you buy a pre-built PC and it comes with a keyboard, that keyboard has a membrane or whatever rubber dome technology in it. And Cherry wanted to take over those keyboards and replace those switches those membranes with their Cherry Viola switches. Now I haven't seen any of this happening, but maybe it will, who knows? That would be super cool, right? But Corsair is the first keyboard to use these switches. I know it's not exactly the purpose that Cherry intended them for, but it creates a much more budget-friendly and affordable option while providing really cool features like RGB, like a wrist rest, like PVD keycaps, without having to crank up that price a bunch because as you know, Cherry MX switches can be quite expensive. All right, so the switches, the stats. These switches are 45 grams in spring force, four millimeters of total distance and two millimeter, millimeters of actuation. So with that alone, I mean, they're basically identical to Cherry MX reds, right? Not necessarily. They're built completely differently. So these are linear, there's no tactile bump, they just feel consistently straight from top to bottom. The bottom housing's milky and it really diffuses the RGB light nicely and it's not super glaring on your eyes when you look at your board. The top housing is transparent, so that really lets the RGB shine through your keycaps nicely without having all that side blindness effect going on. And inside there is a spring and then there's a metal contact leaf and when that leaf touches the metal contact on the PCB, that's how it actuates. So one thing that's missing from here is a bottom. The bottom of the switch is not covered at all. In fact, it's all well, it's completely exposed. All right, one benefit of these switches is they're hot swappable and that's a good thing. It's not hot swappable in the same sense where we always say, you can swap out your switches for other switches when you wanna trial out other switches. It's more hot swappable in the sense that if a switch gets damaged, you get another one and plop it on. I doubt you can get Cherry Viola switches anywhere else right now. And since they have that exposed bottom, we really contemplated should you loop these switches or not. And I think the conclusion that we came to is that I wouldn't risk it and I don't recommend you risk it either because of the uncovered bottom you can have your lube leak out onto the PCB and potentially damage it, rendering your keyboard, well, sort of useless. So the sound, what does this switch sound like? We'll do a quick preview, sound test at the end, like always. So the sound almost sounds like a silent switch. In fact, very close to a Cherry MX silent red switch. However, with those silent switches, you always get a kind of mushy feel because of those rubber dampeners. With this, you don't have that mushy feel, but also you don't really have a very satisfying bottom out because, well, you're lacking the bottom, essentially. So it's not a super satisfying thock, it's not a super satisfying feel, but it sounds relatively quiet compared to its mechanical counterparts. So in this sense, I think this keyboard is really good when you're gaming or typing or working in a space where you don't want other people to really get annoyed by the sounds that you're making. So stabilizers are relatively quiet, the switches are relatively quiet. You could take this to your workplace and not be made fun of, but it does have RGB, but you can use a white or whatever, and it'll still be pretty quiet, but you're still getting a mechanical switch, which does have and key rollover and 100% anti-ghosting, way better than whatever membrane you're using at the office right now. So one of the problems I had with the switches is that because it doesn't have a really satisfying bottom out, I find myself wanting to switch to another board that does have that satisfying feeling. And that was probably the only complaint I had about this board. Other than, you know, it's full size and that's not my preference, but we're staying objective here. So when I first started typing on it, I found that due to the spring getting progressively heavier as it got to the bottom, I wasn't really actuating every single press. Sometimes I would do a question mark and it wouldn't come out. So there were some typos here and there, 
After about an hour, everything was normal once again. Okay, that was the typing test. If you want to hear a ton of different mechanical switches, I'll include our playlist here where we have a bunch of sound demos. But the verdict is... You know, despite Cherry's intention of these switches going into the mass market of keyboards, Corsair took this opportunity to really take advantage of a more budget mechanical switch to use it in their boards and out came a pretty high quality board where the switches aren't overpriced here. So that's not ramping up the price. You get per key RGB programmability, which is really nice as well. You get PBT keycaps, you got plush wrist rests, you got that nice aluminum top, and the keyboard itself is really sturdy. Of course, you also get the lube stabilizers. And this keyboard really to me is surprisingly good. It's all under $100 and for this price, can you get PBT keycaps on a board? Yeah, you can. Can you get RGB lighting on a keyboard? Yeah, I suppose you can. But can you get it in a full-size board? That I sort of question and it's also mechanical. There's a lot of benefits to this board. The only thing that bothers me right now is the unknown durability of the Cherry Viola switches. Cherry does go through pretty rigorous quality control and testing, and it took them more than a year to come out with these switches. So I'm gonna assume that they're gonna last quite a long time. Anyways, this video has gone on long enough. I know we had a lot to talk about. It's quite the conversational piece, actually. Quite a unique keyboard with a lot of different talking points despite looking so simple. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope I provided you some value and thorough information here. So smash that like button, press subscribe of course, and there's more videos to watch if you're into that. For more tech reviews like this one that are super thorough, very honest, maybe too long, subscribe to this channel. There's a ton more of that where it came from. And thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one.